Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Two Beans in a Pod. My name is Jose. Jared right here, boys. Back with another episode. This was a real exciting episode to plan for. I know I mentioned it last week when, you know, teasing it. Uh, we have the 10 Super Bowls that never happened but almost did. Now, I found an article, you know, it was NFL.com. It was a few years ago, I think in 2018, where they uploaded an article listing the top 10 Super Bowls that never happened. All of these are hypotheticals. They could have happened, and I think they would have been excellent Super Bowls, and I just wanted to list them off this week and also get your input as to you know who, who you think would have won and what are your thoughts on those Super Bowls that actually happened. So real quick, without further ado, we're going to go right into it with number 10. This was Super Bowl 35 in Super Bowl 2000. The Baltimore Ravens had defeated the New York Giants 34-7. It's a very popular defense, the 2000s Ravens, led by, you know, Ray Lewis. was one of the all-time great defenses. But what if they faced the St. Louis Rams, who were one year removed from winning the Super Bowl? That 99 Rams team was the best team, you know, the best offense in the NFL. And having them go up against the Baltimore Ravens, who was the number one defense, I think would have been, you know, quite the show. Off of what you remember and off of what you know about the Rams and the Ravens, what what do you make of that kind of a matchup? Well, the first thing I thought of was obviously uh, Ray Lewis against Kurt Warner and how that's going to turn into the mix, right? Mm-hmm. Was, was Kurt Warner uh, with the team by then? Yeah, this was this was one year after they won the Super Bowl. Okay, so it seems like a fun matchup already. You know, uh, Marshall Falk, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, no, that's correct. The running back. Mm-hmm. Uh. I think it would have been a pretty fun Super Bowl. I really don't know who would win, though, because you got Ray Lewis, which obviously, like, I don't need to say anything about him. We already know how good he is, you know. Arguably, you know, the greatest Raven in franchise history. I think he's the greatest uh, Raven, like, of all time for them. Yeah, no. Like, hands down. I know, but there's some people that might say, like, Ed Reed. You know? Ed Reed is really good, too. But Ray Lewis, he, like, he brought in that factor of, like, he was, like, the heart of the team. Yeah. You know? Like, without him, it's like, it's going to be tough for them to be successful, okay? You look at that uh, Ravens defense, they had guys like Ray Lewis, Rod Woodson, both Hall of Famers, Mm -hmm. but this team on offense also had Trent Dilfer, who I know I give a lot of, you know, flack for. He's not one of the best quarterbacks, but he did end up winning a Super Bowl with this team. Um, Shannon Sharp had won a Super Bowl with this team. He was a tight end, you know, already going towards the end of his career. And then to have them go up against the Rams, who, you know, had Warner, Falk, Isaac Bruce, Torrey Holt, um, just a real classic offense versus defense, you know, the, the immovable object versus the unstoppable force, really would have been a fun matchup. The reason it doesn't happen, uh, the Rams, they lose in the wild card round to the New Orleans Saints. They lose in the wild card round, and it was 28-31. to 31. Now, although New Orleans would have won that division, the Rams were right behind them, um, the Rams finished that year ten and six, with the Ravens also finishing twelve and four. Again, number one offense versus number one defense. I personally think that the the Ravens still would have won. Yeah, I think they would have won too. Cause uh, with me, I believe defense was championships, mm-hmm. and that defense that year was just tremendous. It's phenomenal. I you know to talk about the Rams defense, I'm not sure how they would have done against the Ravens. The Ravens weren't really known as an explosive offense. It was their defense that really kept them in the game. They were number one in defense, only allowing 10 points a game. 10 points a game. That's one of the greatest performances by any defense. And I think it's a shame that we didn't get to see that. Uh, again, although I think the Ravens would have, you know, walked out with the championship anyhow. Mm-hmm. Moving to number nine, this is one I know that you'll be interested in. It was Super Bowl 18. This was 1983 season. The Raiders, who were in Los Angeles at the time, would defeat the Washington Redskins. No longer the Redskins, now known as the Commanders. They would win the Super Bowl 38-9, to another blowout. However, the, the Redskins won the NFC Championship game, of course, to qualify for the Super Bowl. But some people questioned, what if they lost that game? The, the team that they faced? San Francisco. San Francisco 49ers. The, the Commanders would win that game, or excuse me, the Redskins, I should say, would win that game 24-21 to as they went on a 21-0 to run during the first three quarters of the game, and the 49ers ended up scoring 21 unanswered points in a comeback. They almost came back and won the game, and they didn't. Uh, Redskins versus the Raiders, again, not one of the greatest Super Bowls, but the potential 
that a California Super Bowl could have had. It would have been L.A. versus San Francisco. I know you have a lot of feelings about that whole rivalry, especially nowadays with the Rams. What do you think it would have meant to have a L.A. Raiders versus San Francisco 49ers Super Bowl back in 84? You know, I almost forgot about 83 that we were we made it that far into the playoffs, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if we would have won that game, we probably would have ended up winning another Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. But then the way I look at it, I look at, um, what's the word? Well, anyways, okay. So with the Raiders, I think they were a pretty solid team that year, okay? Um, the Redskins was another team that was pretty solid. Us, however, I feel like we were still, obviously we came up with the Super Bowl a few years back at the time. Mm-hmm. And we would win the Super Bowl the year after this one. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if we would have won this one, I feel like it would not only boost up uh, Montana's legacy wise, but then I think it would also make a greater storyline for uh, in the near future if you were to face uh, Marino the year after. Okay, I think we would have won this one, in my opinion. I think yeah. you know. I think it's a fair assessment. I mean, you look you look at the the teams, right? Yeah. The Niners at this time didn't have Jerry Rice yet. They had Joe Montana, Roger Craig. They had a uh, Clark. Freddie Solomon was one of their leading receivers, and mm-hmm. also, you know, of course, Ronnie Lott and, you know, Bill Walsh as the coach. They were fourth in offense, scoring 27 points per game. They were fourth in defense, which would lead them to a 10-6 and six, uh, record. Um, I definitely think it would have been a battle of the offenses because San Francisco ranked fourth, but the Raiders ranked third. Guys with Jim Plunkett, they had Marcus Allen, uh, Cliff Branch. Again, mentioning it, the Niners would go on to win the Super Bowl the next year. But always, that Raiders versus Niners you know, rivalry, it still carries on to this day. It just would have added another layer to that mm-hmm. you know, endless rivalry. And I feel like maybe the that game in that scenario would have been a little bit closer. Mm-hmm. Maybe, we would have, or maybe we would have won by like 14 or maybe even 17. Yeah, right? I don't think it would have been a blowout. Yeah, for sure. I, I wouldn't think so. I think it would be like neck and neck in the first half and leaning towards the second half that's when okay we know who's going to take over the game it was a shame though because in the nfc championship they lose despite almost coming back but you look at the numbers san francisco turned the ball over three times Mm -hmm. and time of possession the niners held the ball for 22 minutes out of 48 while the redskins had it for nearly 40 minutes they controlled the ball they controlled the clock which was a big proponent as to why they were able to win that game Uh, We move on to number eight on this list, the very first Super Bowl. Everyone knows it was the Green Bay Packers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Boo. Uh, They would win that game 35-10, to obviously go back-to-back, winning one and two, leading to the Lombardi Trophy being named after Vince Lombardi. However, the Green Bay Packers, what if they had not won the NFL championship that year and instead it was the Dallas Cowboys? The Dallas Cowboys were 10-3-1 back in this season. They were first in points per game, scoring 32 points per game. And had they won, what do you think about the Lombardi Trophy being actually renamed into the you know the, the Landry Trophy for the for the Cowboys or the Strom Trophy for the Chiefs? It wouldn't have been Lombardi. <laughs> okay, so let me just stop you right there, right? If the Cowboys were to win in this scenario, I feel like the Cowboy fans be the type to um, show off like, oh yeah, we won the first ever Super Bowl. And we got the trophy name after uh, our coach or whatever, right? Yeah. Honestly, I think it would have been even more funnier because, like, dude, really, you're celebrating more for the past. What, like, what have y'all done today? Okay. And as for the Chiefs, I feel like they wouldn't be as much arrogant as they were to be. But I feel like they'd be like every now and then, oh, yeah, we won the first ever Super Bowl, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like this game would have been interesting. But I feel like it wouldn't really been, like... I wouldn't say, like, known. I feel like people would talk more about the Packers than the Cowboys at the time. Well, I know, know at, I know at this time the Packers were still, you know, fresh off of winning multiple NFL championships prior to the first Super Bowl. And that's why. But I also think because it was the first Super Bowl, regardless of who was in it, it's still going to be talked about the oh, same yeah. level. Oh, yeah, no, it is. So I think if the Cowboys or the Chiefs would have won, it still wouldn't have changed in terms of how big or how important we look at that first game. But with the Packers, when they originally won it, it was because they were in the middle of a you know a dynasty, basically. Yeah. Uh, moving off of that one, that one I thought was interesting just because of the 
ramifications that would come without the Packers. You know, the change of the name, would they become title town? How would their legacy be? Is Vince Lombardi the greatest coach? You know, all these conversations you could have regarding the Packers and NFL history. But number seven, again, we talked about the Chiefs, you know, in the first Super Bowl, we talked about the Niners in Super Bowl in 1983. But what about Super Bowl 29? The season's 1994. The Niners are reaching the Super Bowl with Steve Young, Jerry Rice, uh, you know, guys like uh, Deion Sanders, Ken Norton Jr., Hanks, Ricky Waters. I can keep going on. But one guy they were missing was Joe Montana. And the reason they missed Joe Montana is because they decided to move on to a, a newer quarterback, a younger quarterback, and Steve Young. But where did Joe Montana end up going? Well, he went with the Chiefs. Now, what if the Chiefs and the Niners met up in Super Bowl Twenty Nine? The original Super Bowl, you know, the Niners defeated the Chargers 49-26, to another blowout. And the Chiefs that year would lose in the wild card round to the Dolphins. I don't like the Chiefs, okay? It, it's well known. So I think in that particular year, if he were to face the Chiefs, I think it would have been a little bit of a closer game but it would be more dominant on the defensive side. The reason why, in that season, we were on a mission, okay? Yeah. And that mission was to beat the Cowboys, okay? That's the only thing we cared about the most. And I feel like if, uh, I feel like since we beat the Cowboys, we were on a hot streak. We were like, we felt unstoppable, we're unstoppable right there. To the point where every play is legit, like, magic, okay? You got Jerry Rice, Okay, you got Steve Young, and like you said, you got um, Ricky Waters, and like everybody else. So many, so much talent on that '94 team. And then compared to the Chiefs, they got an aging Joe Montana. Okay, and we know. I feel like we would have the advantage and know. Okay, this is how Montana is. This is what we know about him. Yeah, they would have an aging Joe Montana, an aging Marcus Allen, and although they had a young Derek Thomas, who was one of the best defensive players to ever step on the gridiron, I agree with you that I don't think it would have been enough to defeat the reigning MVP, Steve Young, defeat the reigning Defensive Player of the Year, Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. And you look at San Francisco that year. uh, We were dominant, like, legit everywhere. Everywhere. They were sixth in in defense, allowing only 18.5 points a game. And on offense, they were first, scoring almost 32 points a game. Yeah. An interesting note, though, is in Week 2, the Chiefs did defeat the Niners. Yeah. 24-17. After that, the Niners went on a 12-win and two loss run, finishing mm-hmm. the year thirteen and three, again completing one of the best years in NFL history. But it's just that that thought of another young versus Montana matchup. I feel like that would have been like the greatest matchup right there. I feel like that's what people would talk about if that scenario would have happened. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I still feel like we would have won that one. I, regardless, I, think- I feel like we would have won whoever we faced. I agree. I feel like, like you mentioned, they were on a mission to defeat Dallas. And once they defeated Dallas, it was just a matter of, okay, who do we have to beat in the Super Bowl? And not only that, but this also affected Steve Young's legacy, where um, is he the quarterback for the Bay? You know, like, is he, like, do people like him over, you know, Joe? Because when Steve came there, everyone's, everyone still was on Joe's side. And most of the time, they rather preferred Joe than Steve. And there was like a whole quarterback controversy that everybody knows i don't even really talk about that and i feel like that game would have determined okay steve young's facing joe Montana. okay if steve young loses no one's really going to give him that respect and they're going to be like see this is just joe's team you know you're not our quarterback or whatever and i feel like that i feel like this would have like helped motivate him motivate him even more yeah so i mean yeah. it's just like the story goes he had to get the monkey off his back there was so much weight on his shoulders and this game and this season just meant so much to the Niners and and to Steve Young himself. And I feel like if he were to face the Chiefs, it would have mean even more for him too. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I agree with that 100%. Uh, Moving on to number six. Uh, This is, I think, an underrated uh, hypothetical. It's Super Bowl XII. In the original Super Bowl XII, the Dallas Cowboys defeated the Broncos 27-10. But the Denver Broncos would defeat the Raiders in the AFC Championship game. Had Had they not won... It would be the Raiders versus Cowboys, which is an odd matchup. It's not really a rivalry we always associate with each other. But we're talking about two of the best offenses that year. Dallas at number two, Oakland at number one. And two of the all-time greatest head coaches in, in Dallas's Tom Landry and, and the Raiders' John Madden. Uh, you look at their rosters, you know, Starback versus Stabler. 
a Tony, Dor- uh, Tony Dorsett versus, you know, the tight end Dave Casper, even Blitnikoff and Cliff Branch on the Raiders. And then on the Cowboys, you have Drew Pearson, uh, a, a guy that had to wait so many years to reach the Hall of Fame, but finally made it in the last couple of years. I know this is a two franchises' histories that you know you may not be as familiar with, but again, just a classic matchup of an old school type of ball. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I look at it more so as a strategic standpoint. How is Landry and Madden going to combat each other? Um, both obviously Super Bowl caliber head coaches, but again, does Dallas win the Super Bowl? Does Oakland win the Super Bowl? It's up in the air. You know, I'm not too sure about it to tell you the truth. Honestly, I think the Raiders would have won that game, okay? And the reason why, their offense, I hear, was good that year, okay? And I don't know too much about, you know, the Raiders' history or whatever, but I do know around that time, you know, the Raiders were pretty good compared to how they are today. I mean, those John Madden years, I mean, he was yeah. he was a perennial Coach of the Year candidate and only coached for 10 years. Dude, has a game name after him, okay? He revolutionized the way the sport is advertised and, and spoken about. Yeah. And I think that's why you have to give John Madden his credit. Yeah, I give him full credit, you know. Um, the Cowboys, I mean, the Cowboys are the Cowboys back then, you know. Like, legit, like, like, like you said, Starbuck, you know, Landry, you know. Like, we, we know who they are, okay? Most fans, you know, around the they're, NFL, they, they are familiar. aware. Yeah, they are aware because, legit, that's only who Cowboy fans talk about besides Troy Aikman, okay? One, one real, you know, real quick note that I realized had the Cow- this is around the time the Cowboys really became a formidable team and they and they were recognized as America's team. America. Had they not won this Super Bowl, are they still referred to as America's team? That's another you know concept to consider. Okay, I feel like Jerry Jones be the type to, to be saying yeah we are America's team, but people around the the league like no not really, and I don't I don't think you guys are yet. You know you still got to prove like a few things you know. Uh, again, I just think the Raiders probably would have won this game, and I feel like they probably would have sent a message out and probably win by like seventeen or if so twenty. At, um, if I'm being too generous, okay. Mm, I don't know. Uh, we moved from a Super Bowl that's really in the past. You know, I mean that was Super Bowl twelve. We moved towards one that's a little bit more modern. In fact, it was one. Of, it was probably my second Super Bowl that I've ever seen. It was uh, Super Bowl Forty Four. The New Orleans Saints would win their first and only Super Bowl to date by defeating the Indianapolis Colts. Ooh, I remember that game. Good game. Drew Brees finally gets a ring, but he has to beat Peyton Manning as a result. However, the the New Orleans New Orleans Saints were the NFC Championship, and do you know how, who they had to beat? Please inform me and the viewers. It was the Minnesota Vikings, who were twelve and four. They were the second best team in the league with almost 30 points a game, but they would lose to the Saints by three points, 31 to 28. And do you know who was on that Vikings team? I'm assuming Brett Favre. Brett Favre, you know, an aging veteran quarterback. They had a young Adrian Peterson. Mm -hmm. They even had a young Jared Allen on the defense. But what's really notable about this Super Bowl is Manning versus Favre. We're talking two of the all-time greatest quarterbacks to play this game. Manning was finally hitting his peak. Brett Favre was still a capable, you know, starting quarterback, but he obviously wasn't what he once was. What are your initial thoughts of guys like Brett Favre and Peyton Manning and what they mean to the NFL and its history? Okay, well, at that time, everybody are aware of Brett Favre and who he is and in terms of his legacy-wise. Peyton Manning, legit, at his peak at the time, um, honestly, I think... On paper, I want to say uh, in, uh, Indianapolis wins this one. But I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Minnesota wins. But my heart tells me Payne Manning would win the Super Bowl. I'll tell you right now, I, I think Indianapolis wins. They You know, the, the Vikings went 12-4. and four. Yeah, and that's impressive. The Colts went 14-2. and two. And that, That's even more impressive. Their two losses were as a result of resting their players. They went 14-0 and 0 and then lost the last two. Yeah. This is a team that had tight end Dallas Clark, Reggie Wayne as a receiver. Uh, on the defense, they had Robert Mathis and Dwight Freeney, just all-time greats in terms of you know the Colts and the NFL. And they also had a rookie punter named Pat McAfee. Oh, wow. A lot of people know Pat McAfee you know, as one of the greatest punters in NFL history. His time in WWE nowadays, he's one of the best commentators they have. 
Also, uh, you know, a quick plug. He's on SummerSlam this weekend, facing off against, you know, Happy Corbin for our wrestling fans. Uh, big fan of Pat McAfee. But regardless, I do think that the Colts win this Super Bowl. We move over. We're now hitting the, we're in the top four now. At number four, this is probably one of the ones that I really would have wanted to see. I think I might have touched on this last week. I, you know, to tell you the truth, I don't really remember that well. But it's Super Bowl Twenty Five. The Buffalo Bills arrive to their first Super Bowl and they defeat the New York Giants. Or excuse me, they don't defeat them. They they lose to the New York Giants twenty to nineteen. Boo. The Giants, however, narrowly walked out of the NFC Championship game by defeating the Forty ers by a score of fifteen to thirteen. And just thinking of that possible matchup of the Bills versus the Niners. 13 wins versus 14 wins. We're talking, you know, Kelly versus Montana, Jerry versus Reed, Craig versus Thurman. I could keep going on and on. Uh, this is the number one and the number two offenses at that time. Or excuse me, the number one offense in the Bills and the number two defense in the Niners. And it raises the question, what would have happened? Would the Bills still have went to four straight? Were the Niners going to be able to complete the three-peat? Something that still has not been done to this day. I can tell just by asking you. I think you're gonna. I don't think I know who you're gonna pick. But what do you think a three P would mean for for the Niners at this point? I tell you what, man. If you were to win that three P, I would be flexing, okay. And honestly, I feel like if this match were to happen, instant classic, okay. Mm-hmm. I agree. And the team I got winning, the Bills, of course. Nah, I'm just playing. Come on, you thought? No, I'm going with the Niners, okay. And maybe I'm just being like biased. But it's like, that team was hot, okay? The Bills, they were also a team that was like, you know, doing pretty damn well. On a mission. Well, you know, yeah. they, they developed the K-Gun you know, offense, uh, a, a no-huddle offense throughout the game. Teams could not keep up with them. But then you mentioned the Niners, who, you know, had George Seifert in one of the best defenses that year. Again, it reminds me of that whole, you know, Rams versus Ravens, where it's the best defense versus the best offense, what is going to give? And like you mentioned, nine times out of ten, we're probably going to pick the defense. Yeah, Niners have the best defense, so I think it's fair to say that's who we would go, that's who we would rock with. But again, another one of the hypotheticals of like, what if? And I feel like if uh, this scenario would happen, I think the Bills would go to a few more. I don't think they would go to four more. Mm-hmm. I feel like this game it would have been, I don't want to say high scoring. But I think it'd be like in around late twenties, early thirties in terms of points or the, the final score for the game. Yeah. Um, and I think it might be a really close one, probably about like ten or so. Okay, I buy that. I buy that. Um, I really, th- I strongly think this would have been an instant classic, and I think people I, would still talk about that game if it were to happen. They still talk about the one that happened as an instant classic, but I do agree that, you know, the Niners versus Bills definitely would have been a fun matchup, especially knowing the talent that was in that game. Mm-hmm. Whether it was on the coaching side, the defense, or the offense, it would have been just phenomenal. Uh, for number three of the What If Super Bowls. All right, top three. This Super Bowl actually could have happened on three separate occasions. Oh, jeez. In, in the last decade. I should say. I should oh, preface oh, this. Oh, jeez. Okay. This could have happened three times in the last decade. Uh, but I'll, I'll go through, you know, the first one that was on the list for the NFL.com, and I'll briefly mention the other two instances. This is Super Bowl forty six. It was the New England Patriots had lost to the Giants for the second time in, like, five years. <laughs> the Patriots at that time, 13 wins. They were the third best offense. They were on an 8-0 and streak to finish the regular season, and they had guys like Tom Brady. Have you heard of him? Nope. we got guys like <laughs> Gronkowski, Aaron Hernandez, Wes Welker, and a young Edelman on that offense. The team that the Giants had to beat in the divisional round to advance was the Green Bay Packers, who had just won the Super Bowl a year prior. That Green Bay team had guys like Aaron Rodgers, Jordy Nelson, Greg Jennings, and on the defense, it had a young... Matthews and an aging Charles Woodson. One thing about that Green Bay team, though, is they were first in points per game, scoring 35 points a game. That's big. That's a lot of points to be scoring every game. What the hell? The MVP that year was Aaron Rodgers, and they went to win 15 games that year. 
but they did not win the divisional round. And I think it's a shame because we would have had Rodgers versus Brady. It's the ultimate matchup, top quarterback versus top quarterback. But the problem was they lost to the Giants in the divisional round, allowing four turnovers, allowing four sacks on Rodgers. The Giants defense just knew how to pressure them and how to expose their weaknesses and expose those mistakes to win and go on the run that they did. For you, what do you think a Rodgers versus Brady matchup would have looked like? And who would have won, do you think, the Packers or the, or the Patriots that year? Honestly, that probably would have been legendary. I feel like, uh, wait, by any chance, do you know New England's record? They were 13-3 and three that year. Okay, honestly, I feel like New England would have the upper hand. Reason why, I feel like the Green Bay Packers, they would have been burnt out, okay? Winning 15 games, like you said, okay? Really impressive, but it could be tires tiresome and it could affect your body and the way you play throughout the uh, postseason because the postseason and the regular season two different things two different monsters okay? two different beasts not only that but we all know aaron Rodgers. okay aaron Rodgers, he's a bad man at that time okay yeah. but we don't know how long the defense would have withstand or uh, withstand or last i should say okay yeah because you like you said you got a young clay matthews correct that's right um still a little bit inexperienced but he knows okay somewhat you know what to do, you know. But with Brady, he's been there before. He knows what to do. It's business Bel- as usual. It's, it's business as usual. And yeah. at, at, to date, at that point in time, they had only lost one Super Bowl. Yeah, and that was to the 2007 Giants. And I feel like the Patriots would have won this one, and I feel like it would have humbled Rodgers a little bit more, and hopefully uh, changed his personality or whatever. Or so, and be more of a, a great leader, and they might go back the following year. I don't know. He's he, you know he's still struggling to get back to a Super Bowl ever since Rule Forty Five. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm curious to see if it ever happens. But I know I, I I mentioned that this Super Bowl could have happened in other times. Another instance that this could have happened was Super Bowl Forty Nine. The Patriots had faced the Seahawks, but the Seahawks had to beat the Packers in the NFC Championship in overtime. Mm. That one, I feel like, would have been a better matchup than this one. I'm surprised they went with you know this one, but I feel like it was because of the 15-1 and record for the Packers. But that's Super Bowl 49, all-time classic. But to see Rodgers at his prime, Brady in his prime, would have been great. Another time it could have happened would have been Super Bowl 51. The Falcons had beaten the Packers in the NFC Championship, and then obviously we know the Patriots would defeat the Falcons, coming back from 28-3. to All-time great Super Bowl. That's so crazy to that day. Yeah. Man, I'm sorry for y'all Falcons fans, but damn, I don't know what the hell happened right there, man. Hey, the only positive that came out of it is we got Shanahan yeah, as yeah. the head coach. I mean, you got you got that right, you know. Rounding around, we're back at number two, and this is probably the Super Bowl I really would have wanted to see. It was Super Bowl twenty. The year is 1985. The 85 Bears were wreaking havoc all over the all over the NFL. Singletary was Defensive Player of the Year. They win 15 games. They allowed the second, or excuse me, they they scored the second most points in the league, 28 and a half. But their defense, number one, allowed 12 points a game. We're looking at guys like Jim McMahon as the quarterback, Walter Payton as the running back, all-time great running back. And on defense, you got guys like Richard Dent, Perry, Singletary, Ron Rivera also. They beat the Patriots 46-10 to in a dominant game. Oh, buddy, man. Ridiculous. Dude, I love that defense, okay? It's probably it's the greatest defense of all time. Oh, yeah. Like, dude, honestly, in my opinion, I don't think there'd be any team close to them. The, yeah, on paper, there's some, okay, that that performed almost similar. The 2000s Ravens, I think, deserve a yeah. shout-out. Yeah, sure. they, they do. But I feel like people still talk about that Bears defense till this day. Yeah, there were legends, Hall of Famers, and all-time greats yeah. at every position. Uh, real quick, they had defeated the Patriots, but they almost faced someone else. In the AFC Championship game, the Patriots would win 31-14, to dispatching Dan Marino and the Miami Dolphins, who were 12-4 and that season. That offense by the Dolphins was fourth, while they also allowed the uh, 12th most points a game. They allowed 20 points a game, which is really a downfall for them. They allowed just too many points by the opposition. I mentioned that Chicago had won 15 games. Yeah. That one loss was to the Miami Dolphins in Week 13. They lost to Miami 38-24. to We're talking about one of the all-time greatest defenses versus one of the all-time greatest 
offensive players in Dan Marino who had a cannon of an arm. And to see that on a Super Bowl, on the big stage, Chicago, Miami, I definitely think would have been an all-time classic. Again, I think I'm still going to rock with the winners, Chicago, because Dan Marino didn't have enough arsenal. He himself, fantastic talent, all-time great. But is he enough to take on that, that Bears defense? Probably not. What do you think? Let me add to that, okay? Honestly, if they were to face Miami, I feel like uh, Chicago would have been even motivated on a whole nother level to the point where, nah, I got them winning by like in the 40s, maybe in like the early 50s. Go ahead and explain yeah. why. I know why, but go ahead. Because I feel like the way how the Bears defense uh, works, I feel like to me, uh, a great defense, the way how they work, they use a defensive line or the front seven, I should say, right? Mm hmm. Pressure the quarterback, okay? As soon as possible, that way he has to throw right away. He's going to make an error. And that's when the def- the secondary is going to come in pick up the ball, okay? Yeah. And I feel like um, Marino's going to get too tired. The Olin's going to get too tired, burn out. The Bears, not. Nah, they're going to be pissed off because, yeah, like they beat them. They want revenge. Motivate so mo- uh they're motivated to the point where it's like, no, we want to beat the hell out of them. Yeah, they, they okay? want to prove that. They hey, want we, their blubber, damn it. We, <laughs> they won 15 games, and you know in their hearts they wanted Miami to prove that, okay, you may have beaten us in the regular season, but we will beat you where it matters most, where all the lights are on brightest, and where the crowd is watching, and millions of people are watching at home. I feel like, again, like you mentioned, it would have been all-time performance by Chicago, but to see them against Dan Marino... Uh, keep in mind, this is one year removed of him losing to the Niners in Super Bowl nineteen. Not only that, but I feel like no one really talks about this scenario uh, about about this happening, you know? Because it's like, like, because the Chicago Bears were just so dominant. I, yeah. I feel like nobody yeah, could touch you. them. Thank you. Nobody could touch them. Um, and finally, we get to number one, and the star power in this Super Bowl would have been off the charts. I know you got Jacksonville going up against the Cleveland Browns, you know, in the AFC Championship. No, I'm just playing, man. Go uh, ahead. Can you imagine if that was... I mean... It could happen in the it future. It could happen in the future. I mean, we'd, you know, never say never. But no. 1998. Oh, okay. So this is not too far removed from, you know, our childhood. It's Super Bowl 33. In this Super Bowl, the Denver Broncos would defeat the Atlanta Falcons 34-19 to in what would become John Elway's final game in the NFL, winning a Super Bowl, 14 wins in the regular season. This one's for John. There you go. Sorry. They were the second best offense that year, scoring 31 points per game. You had Hall of Famers like Elway, Shannon Sharp, Terrell Davis, who was the MVP that season. They had defeated Atlanta, which is kind of a underwhelming matchup. People didn't want to see that. No one thought yeah. Atlanta was going to be there. On paper, yeah, it doesn't seem too fitting for Atlanta to be there. Yeah. But, you know, I'm going to give them the respect because you know, they did make it. They did know? make it, of course. But that's not the team that should have made it. The team that should have made it is the team that Atlanta had beaten in the NFC Conference game. And that team was 15-1. and I mentioned Denver was second in offense. Well, the team they beat was first with 35 points per game. This team was the Minnesota Vikings, 1998, led by Randall Cunningham, mm-hmm. a rookie Moss, Randy Moss, who had 17 touchdowns, over 1,300 receiving yards, a veteran in Chris Carter, who had 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns, and Robert Smith at running back, who had 1,100 yards rushing. Minnesota's arsenal at this time, unmatched. It's one of the best offensive years in NFL history. It is a shame this team couldn't make the Super Bowl at all with you know the talent that they had. 15 wins versus 14 wins. Minnesota, Denver, I think this would have been one of the best Super Bowls to date because you have a young guy like Cunningham, you have Moss, and then you match them up with you know veterans like Shannon Sharp and John Elway, who, again, they've known the stage. They've been here before. I think Minnesota would have beaten the Denver Broncos. Okay, so uh, no disrespect, but I almost forgot about the, the Vikings, okay? That Especially means- Randy Moss, okay? You got to give him his props. Absolutely. Right? It's, like, for me, he's the second greatest receiver of all time. Oh, yeah. And some people want to argue saying uh, he's better than Jerry Rice. You know, I don't know if I'm biased, but I still think Jerry is the, is like the top dog. But uh, Moss is not that uh, far away. You know, Moss is pretty uh, close. All-time great. And oh, yeah. real quick to interject, uh, in terms of the Moss versus Rice debate, 
some people want to argue, well, you know, to be an all-time great, to be the, the GOAT, you got to have rings. Oh, but some people are like, oh, what about records? Well, you know what? Jerry Rice has both. And yeah. I feel like, for me, that's that's the, the disputable truth. It's undisputed. Jerry, you know, uh, Moss has a lot of records himself. Unfortunately, he didn't have a ring, and that's a shame. But I will still give it to Jerry Rice, who is the all-time greatest receiver of all time. No, only that, but I feel like records are meant to be broken, though. But rings are cherished forever. Absolutely. Okay? And I'm not disrespecting Moss. Moss... No, absolutely If not. there was no Rice, I would say Moss is my favorite receiver of all time. Uh-huh. Yeah, I agree with that. Um... Plus, not only that, but the way the culture he brings in, you know, the whole like receivers in general, you know, where you know the phrase, "Oh, you just got mossed," you know. Yeah, it's 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 a part of the culture now. Oh yeah, and I feel like uh, this would definitely like uh, boost up his legacy. And to keep in mind, this was his rookie year. Exactly. So to do the the numbers that he produced and, and the athleticism that he displayed in '98 in his rookie season, it would have altered his legacy i mean you look at a guy i compare him to like alan iverson of the nba yeah the culture the standard and and the and the legacy that he would have built for himself would have been unmatched it still is to this day but to think about what he could have done this year in 1998 that is and then you said the quarterback was randall cunningham correct? yeah one of the very first mobile quarterbacks in, yeah. in the nfl and i feel like him against um john elway i feel like that'd be a little bit i don't want to say passing the torch but I think it would have been pretty cool, though, you know, because you have one generation facing a new generation right there. Yeah. No, 100%. It reminds me, of, you know, if I may, the Super Bowl 50 where uh, an aging quarterback faced a young, up-and-coming mobile quarterback. It was Peyton versus Cam Newton. Mm -hmm. Very similar. Obviously, you know, the vet won in uh, Peyton oh, no, Manning. Oh, he clearly won. Well, yeah, the defense carried. I'm sorry. But nonetheless, again, it reminds me of that matchup. As we, as we close this episode, what are your quick takeaways from these, you know, hypothetical Super Bowls? Um, what's one that really stood out for you? I feel like the one that probably stood out was probably the Niners and the uh, the Bills. Yeah. I just feel like that match would have been really fun to see. Uh -huh. um, and I feel like it just would have, like, not only changed the game, but also, like, have uh, that terms of, like, Legacy-wise, I guess you would say, because I feel like okay, like for uh, for basketball, everyone thinks of the, like the great match of you know you got like the Bulls versus Utah, for example. Okay. Yeah. Everyone talks about that when it talks about finals, you know, or they talk about oh the the Lakers versus I don't want to say Celtics because you know there are dynasties, you know, they have rivalries to begin with. But I was thinking about you know um, L. A. versus Philly. You know, another great matchup, you know. Everyone talks about Allen Iverson doing this, doing that, you know. Yeah, sure. Um, do you get what I'm trying to say, though? I get what you're saying, and, I, and that's why I love these kind of lists where, I mean, obviously they're what-ifs and they're hypotheticals, and they didn't happen, but it's nice to think about, well, wow, what if that would have happened? What kind of things would we have seen in terms of NFL history, and what are some of the matchups that we could have been exposed to and, and remember forever? And how could uh, the NFL timeline, if you will, how would it have been impacted or altered as a result? Um, this was a fun episode for me to research. I like going through the what ifs, you know, not just in an NFL history, but just in sports history, because there are so many variable variables to consider in terms of who wins what matchup. Um, I'm looking forward to the NFL season just around the corner, just a little bit over a month away, beginning the 2022 NFL season. This is one of the best times of the year. You're getting football coming back. Uh, basketball again only a couple months away as well it's really hitting the prime of the sports seasons you know what i'm saying oh yeah definitely see fall is my favorite season of the year i like winter because the cold but fall sports man like sports i just love sports you know i've been i've been with sports has been around my whole entire life okay and football is my favorite sport and i'm just so hyped that it's back and yeah that's what i gotta say yeah, no, again, looking real forward to the, the NFL season. As always, you can find me on social media at justjose underscore three. That is my Twitter handle, my Instagram handle. Check out my YouTube channel as well. That's justjose underscore three. I'm producing more content video-wise. Um, not only am I expanding towards the NFL, but I'm thinking about expanding towards more professional wrestling content as well. Just released a video the other day about why... Wrestling. I, exactly. Uh, just explain... Just... Uh, see, now you threw me off my game here. 
just uploaded a, a video explaining why I became a professional wrestling fan, as well as highlighting and recapping an episode of Dynamite. Uh, that's AEW Dynamite, I should say, for those that aren't familiar. Wrestling. Definitely looking to expand towards more of a professional wrestling audience. It's a passion of mine that I've had since I was a, a young kid. Um, I know you can attest to that because you were also there. We would watch it together. Hell yeah, brother. It's a big part of our lives. And I, and it's funny for me because I feel like not many people were aware of it. They know that we like sports, but I don't think they knew that we were such big pro wrestling fans. So that's definitely something I'm, I'm looking into. I take it as a challenge. And I look forward to promoting it and trying to get more viewers out there watching the product, whether it's WWE or AEW or even you know Japanese or, or Lucha Libre, you know whatever you may have. Um, again, you can follow me at JustJose underscore three on all social media platforms. Jared, where can we find you? All right, boys and girls, if they're, if you are watching, okay. We're all inclusive here at Two Beans in a Pod. Yeah. Okay. So, follow me on Twitch. You know, twitch.tv slash Sanfran Five. You know, I actually started um, Resident Evil Four. I modded it. You know, with the randomizer mod. Crazy as hell. Okay. You can actually find the the highlight video to that on my YouTube channel, which is Sanfran Five. I know it's original, okay? I like it. Uh, if not, you can also follow me on um, uh, TikTok, you know, SanFriend5 underscore. Uh, and if you want, you know, you can, like, add me on Snapchat, you know, at um, broke underscore beaner 445, you know? Of course, right? I'm, I'm going to say that? it again. What was that one more time? Yeah, uh, broke underscore beaner 445. And, and the beaner, the B is capitalized. There, okay? That makes a difference? Uh, no, I just like saying it. Oh, I wasn't sure. I was because I honestly don't know if that ever makes a difference if you but capitalize yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And I've had that since uh, freshman year, I think. I don't even know. Uh, so, Never change. Yeah, bear with me. Never change it. Again, thanks again, guys, for stepping in and watching, or I should say, listening to another episode of Two Beans in a Pod. Be sure to give us a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the pod. Go ahead and join the Beaner Army. We'll see you again next week on Two Beans in a Pod.